coming to the tail end of our collaboration, which is exciting, uh, kind of sad, just because we've, we've been working on this for so long. It's, a, it's been so exciting um, and so much fun to work with you and, and to do this project, to actually have it come to a conclusion, see the liquid in a bottle with its final label on it. Uh, this is the final tasting, and, and then now it's in your hands. Yeah, we really like our Quirker and Herder here at VBC. It works very well. Yeah. <laughs> here, James. <laughs> Gotta just work it around the sides. Nice. So yeah. So again, the CO2 we kept it pretty low, as you could tell. You know, it's not gonna pop and gush right off like that or anything. Definitely meant to sip and enjoy, and not to get filled up by gas. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Chocolate. Still chocolate. I think we've been saying chocolate since the first tasting. <laughs> right. Yeah, I really I really get some of the alcohol on this one too. Yeah. Um I guess being that it it, it got bumped up a few points from the bourbon barrels. Yeah, quite a few. But that one got You can see the stainless steel wand, how it goes into the barrel. At the bottom of this wand, there's a small pin that'll actually keep it off the bottom of the barrel. Uh, the reason why we want to do that is because we want to leave any sediment on the bottom, any yeast that settled out, because we filled, we filled these with unfiltered beer. Um, so any yeast or any you know, barrel particulate, there's all char on the inside of this barrel. We want to keep that behind. So that pin's going to keep the end of the wand right off the bottom of the barrel. We'll be able to pull everything out. Um, and the reason we're able to do that is because we have CO2 here. So similar to a keg, we're pushing down with a blanket of CO2 and pulling out from the wand from the bottom of the barrel on its way up to the lagering tank. I think um, it's actually interesting how well the bourbon marries with you know some of the malty flavors and the grist that you get something that's like that, like, you know, that third thing, you know, you're not tasting yeah. the bourbon, you're not tasting the, the malts, you're tasting something that's, a, you know, a kind of marriage of the two. And I think that, that comes out in this one. Yeah. I mean, I think perfectly stated. I, I think that dark raisin almost aroma that you get from a mix of, you know, it wasn't like a very fruity fermentation or anything like that. It was more of peat and chocolate and caramel. Um, but to really get that, that, I think that really dark fruit aroma now especially I think is a marriage of the the bourbon barrel aging and also the malt background which this beer is you know you, you typically is a malt bomb before it's bourbon barrel aged we made the version of this at earth mm -hmm. and it's uh and this version is just so clean I'm not like saying my version is dirty but like it's like rough around the edges and this beer is like so clean and so uh, you know like I don't know it's just a pretty amazing yeah I don't know, it probably has nothing to do with you. It's probably all the equipment that's doing it, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, I, I mean, it's both operators, but it also is our equipment. We have, you know, really state-of-the-art state stuff here. So to, to make a beer, to spin a beer, clarify a beer, package a beer, we're doing as much as we can to keep that beer as true and pure as we can. Polished. You know, it's polished. Polished, exactly. exactly it, that's yeah. a great way to put it. I mean, you know, our, our bottling equipment is, is top-of-the-line equipment. So to make sure that, you know, the, the beer that it's coming out of the bright tank is going to be the same in the bottom. It's going to last that way. A little bit of oxygen pickup is going to ruin that. And that's something, of course, we're trying to avoid with every, every brewer is trying to avoid oxygen pickup and bottling. Um, but like you said, essentially, like a lot of the, the materials we put in place here is what helps us have a really clean and, and finished, yeah. good finished product. I think, uh, you know, the idea about putting it in bourbon and, um, it, you know, and making a, a big, bold, you know, um, challenging beer that's easy to drink is is not an easy task to do, and I think uh, we've kind of accomplished that in this beer. At least I feel that way, anyway. Yeah. So I, I think it's 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 easy to make something and put it in a bourbon barrel and call it something new. I think it's a little bit harder to design design something like this beer that was intended to get that bourbon barrel aging to make a finished product. I, I, this is very smooth and very polished, and why there's a little bit of alcohol heat to it right now. I know that's going to mellow away with some time, and it's pretty enjoyable right now. I mean, considering how cold it is today, <laughs> this beer is releasing perfectly. We were sweating bullets, filling barrels, and brewing this beer back, you know, several months ago. And now, for it to be a nice, uh, nice nip day, this is really this is the type of beer that I want to drink right now. Um, this is the type of beer that I'll put away 
for a year, for two years, for three years, and, and bust out around the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, and still enjoy then. So <laughs> every single video, I'm like, I feel like I'm just like sweating and muttering, and like by the time it comes out, I'm like, that actually looks pretty good. <laughs> And I felt like that right now. I was like, a lot of these are just run-on sentences. But I know Andy's going to make it look like we know what we're talking about. So, please, chop away. Yeah.